Welcome, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the HR Leaders Podcast, the show where we discuss the future of work with today's most innovative and successful people leaders. On today's show, I am joined by Joel Beasley, who's the CTO and founder of Leaderbits and host of the Modern CTO Podcast, and Christopher Lind, who's the head of global digital learning at GE Healthcare. Welcome to the show, guys. How are you? Don't all talk at once like we haven't been on, on the call for half an hour beforehand. <laughs> you know, we were talking about it being awkward with the intro, so we had to really, you know, make it that way. We nailed it, guys. <laughs> you should have so said that. Just, just how about we just don't talk and let Chris think that he can't hear us and uh, <laughs> and see how long <laughs> and see how long it lasts before he says anything. We're like, oh, I would kill you guys if you did that to me. All right, so let's jump straight in. So, uh, welcome everyone. On today's show, we're going to be talking about why leadership training fails, and apparently, Joel has a solution. <laughs> I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> Joel, before we jump in, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and, and what do you do just to provide a bit of context and, and then the same for yourself, Chris, briefly for people that haven't come across you before. Yeah. So my name is Joel Beasley. I started out background in engineering. My father taught me from a young age, age eight, went all the way up through high school programming, sold some real estate software after graduating high school started writing a blog, which got popular, turned it into a book, and then I turned it into a podcast. And today it's the largest technology leadership podcast in the world. And I get to interview CTOs of like NASA, Microsoft, Verizon, some really great people, very similar to how Chris interviews some of the brightest minds in, in HR, just like Christopher Lind. Hand it over to you, buddy. That was a nice segue. Yeah, well, that was that was much smoother than the beginning transition. So, so I don't I don't have as exciting of a story, I don't think. Um, but so I head up digital learning at GE Healthcare, which I actually have found I have to explain to people what I mean because they hear head of digital learning and they're like, oh, so you make like e-learning content, right? And I'm like, no, no, that's actually not at all what we do. But um, so really, I think my focus and my whole career has been in what I would say is people development in any scale, whether that's leaders, whether that's functional, you know, frontline stuff, whether that's engineering, it's been all over the space, but really the digital side of it is bringing that digital lens to how are we thinking about this in the most innovative way possible in terms of how can technology help us do it the best way versus like, well, okay, we kind of did it. So I'm very excited to hear the solution to leadership development today. <laughs> Let's build you, just, it up. you just handed uh, it back yeah, to me in know, that way. Right? That's so mean. That's so mean. <laughs> Let's jump back into uh, Joel in terms of what you're doing now. I know yeah. you've done a lot of research on this topic. So, in your opinion, why are companies failing <laughs> in their leadership yeah. development? Well, we'll start with the solution, then, like one of the solutions. There's a couple parts, but the first part. Well, let's actually back it up and say how it's broken. So I've interviewed a lot of different people on this topic and I've done a lot of research because these are our customers and we have to build something that's useful for them, right? Mm -hmm. So what what they were saying was the problem is that you know people don't want to do it, right? They do the they build these courses, they get this information together, and then they put it out there, and then the engagement rate is like horrible, often less than 10%. And so if we say, okay, well, we're gonna say it's broken because people aren't doing it, then the solution would be, how do you build something that people want to do? Fair enough? Yeah. Yeah. So the way you build something that people wanna do is by building something that brings them value. People wanna do things that bring them value. They, If they think that they're going to go spend an hour in this online training and that it's going to be completely useless, then, their engagement rates are going to be really low because they don't see the value in it for themselves. It doesn't help them uh, become a better leader. And so we found that there's two ways that people, at least the you know 1,500 leaders that are on our platform, there's two ways that you have to help them. You have to help them on the short term with something that they're experiencing that week, right? And then you have to help them on the long term, which is helping them incrementally become the type of leader that they want to be. One of the things you said that I completely agree with, and I think fundamentally this is where a lot of L and D kind of makes a mistake is, well, people aren't engaging with it, so we need to tell they, they just don't know about it. We have this mindset that like, well, if we just sell it right or package it right, like then people will come and and I agree. If they're not finding value, we can market however we want and nobody's gonna do anything. And even if we did, it's not actually going to drive any sort of behavioral change. Maybe they do it, but so what? And this is the challenge that I run into a lot is that 
learning is certainly a component of leadership development, but it's not the only component. And I think that's okay. where, you know, in a lot of organizations, and I've been in orgs that do it really well, and I've been in orgs that don't, if they haven't identified, like, what does being a leader here mean? And what do we expect out of leaders? It's just a, a mess of like, well, it's whatever a leader decides they want it to be. And that's a dangerous spot to be in. Yeah. No, you make a good point because that's step one in our sales process is we have to align the content, like the actions people will be taking with the culture, what it means to be a leader at that company. When, when you said that this is a topic of today, I was like, look, at, I've got 180 episodes <laughs> mm -hmm. where yeah. this is a topic that comes out. Every, and I was thinking, oh, there's so many times I had this conversation. I was trying to narrow down to three things uh, of why it fails. And then the, the one that the main one that kept coming up was the, the training itself, the reinforcement of that training. And in most cases, it's it's non-existent in most of the companies. They do the leadership training and then that's it. Go off and do great things. Be leaders. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Be leaders. And then there's no follow-up. And it, it is and it's not consistent follow-up and there's no support to help them. Um, so that was the main one of the main ones that kept coming up. The second one is that the objectives and goals for the results were completely unclear. Yep. So what what does it what does it what does it even mean? What does good look like? Uh, as well, because a lot of the time you can't have you know leadership development training, and then the KPIs aren't changing to 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 the desired result. So so what do you expect from them? And then lastly, what you said is the motivational factors. What does it mean for me as a leader and, and my team, not just the organization, but me as an individual, and to make sure that I'm motivated to actually do it. Uh, so those are the kind of three things that kept coming up over and over and over again when I was listening to our previous episodes and looking at some of the areas from the members. So how do we turn this around then? What are some steps that, you, that we can take to be able to, to change this? I'll, I'll share like a couple of things that we've learned about like how to make it useful for them. Is that cool? Yeah, go, go for, for it. it. Okay. So, and by the way, I want to, I want to inject in, in here real quick that I did not mean to get into leadership training. So what happened was when the podcast got popular, people came to me and they said, hey, we hear these leaders giving this great actionable advice. How do I get my leaders to take action on this as well? And I said, I had no idea. I said, like, send them a link to the podcast and tell them to listen and do what the great <laughs> leaders do. <laughs> and then, right? And then our audience kept messaging us and saying, hey, this is actually pretty cool. So I built a basic version in like 10 days where we created this concept of a leadership challenge. And this is when I, I fundamentally found that, that leadership was broken in this one regard. So we take people and we put them into a learning environment or a workshop, right? And then we say, this is what you should do later if this situation arises. And then we hope that they remember it and then they'll, they'll take that action and behave that way at a, at a later time and date, right? I thought, okay, well, why don't we just make this leadership challenge where we get advice from somebody, have them go take the action like in real time and just have it be like a 10 minute experience where you watch a video for three minutes, they go take some action with their team and then they put into the system like what happened, what their experience was. That way you just reduce that cycle of learning to this really short, short item. And so we built that basic version and we pushed it out and people liked it. And then I said, okay, well, you pay for it and they said yeah we've got a leadership budget this, <laughs> yeah. this can works, you pay for it please yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. this works really good <laughs> yeah, and yeah. so i said all right well i had never made a sale before in my life because remember i'm like an engineer who started a podcast about like technology leadership and so i said okay so i, I sold like a hundred grand in like four months of this leadership training and then i went and raised venture capital and now we have like a whole team in, in a company and so all that happened but the interesting part here is that when when I set out to do this and we got those initial people, every every question I asked was, how do I make it easier for these people to want to become better? Which is an entirely different question than most companies are asking is, how do I sell more stuff to L&D people? Yeah. And how do we sell more of what they're used to buying? And we were focused on, you know, how do I just get people to engage? So we had these real, we had these engagement rates and they were like, you know, 10%. I'm like, that's horrible. So we started making these changes. I was like, the first thing we have to do is we have to, I, I, I literally Googled how to get people to do something consistently. And then the definition of habit came up. <laughs> like, okay. And so we said, well, why don't we just send these leadership challenges at the same time in the same day for the person every week? That way they get into this habit of like, oh, Friday at nine, I'm going to get something that's going to help me improve for 10 minutes and hear from a great leader and then take action on this advice. And so we made it a habit. And then we saw our engagement jump up. We're like, oh, so now they're getting better incrementally, but they don't have to like really think about it. And so that was one of the, the key innovations. And the second thing we found is that 
it's because it's diverse, because we clip different leaders giving different types of advice, it's not the same video person, right? It's not like the same methodology or the same author that's been around for a hundred years giving the same leadership advice. So it, the diversity and the advice is very, it's entertaining. It's kind of cool to get you know, mm -hmm. advice from, from someone you respect. Those two things were really important. So one one of the things, and I remember Joel when we first talked. I mean, it was a, it was a while back. But yeah. one of the things that I think you and I had a similar vision on, and you hit on it there. I feel like a lot of leadership development, and I hate the word training because in general mm -hmm. we know training doesn't work. But when we think about leadership development, so much of it is about what we want you to be versus what do we want you to do. It's not actionable. It's just like here's this stuff leaders are you know <laughs> empathetic leaders are this and it's like okay and then we leave it up to them to interpret well what do you want me to do with that i can't go back to my team and just be this and and i don't really know what that means and we have no idea what that is versus you know, when you talked about and what you talked about there was like here's a thing here's a task go do this and strengthen that behavioral muscle and that's that's really what the core of learning is. I mean, you, you don't you don't learn to ride a bike by watching YouTube videos of riding people riding bikes. I mean, <laughs> right? like, oh, you get on a bike unless you're me, and you ride it, <laughs> or, or or you watch the video whilst riding the bike. Right. Yeah. Like okay. <laughs> you know, it's it, it just to me, it's you know, we say it, but a lot of times we struggle with bringing that to action, which is yeah. So do something about, it. and then you know what? Do it again, and you're probably gonna fail. And do it, and then talk happen. about it. Talk about it, like what yeah. didn't go well, and things like that. And I feel like sometimes maybe it's this kind of, oh, if you're in a leadership role, you're supposed to have it all figured out. And it's like I didn't. Like I no. fell flat on my face a number of times. Uh, whenever I speak to uh, the CEOs, I'm uh, doing this really, really well. It's always they always have day to day co coaching involved to help people become more effective in that new design very particular it's specific to the individual and that's very very important as well it's not sort of generic it's specific to that individual and then it aligns from that individual's purpose and work directly back to the organizations there's also a link um there and they understand the why and what it means for them and there's no easy way of doing that i don't think yeah, <laughs> um, no. to, to be able to personalize it to every single person you can't do that through an lms <laughs> well hold on a second go, go for let's, it. let's talk about this because we personalize it like heavily to to the individual and one of the ways that we do that is when you go take that action and you come back in originally we wanted them to to put their experience in the text box so we could use it as advertise we created this little little uh bot called leader bot that would like motivate you right because people go in their natural rhythms of like wanting to improve and then not so we recognize that and uh plan against it so we were we said we're going to make this little uh box so that people put their experience on how it went with the challenge and we'll use that excitement to then send to them later to encourage them hey remember when you did this but then we found we were like looking through them to see what people were doing with the challenges and we were that oh man i got to reply to this person like they're doing something that's like a coachable moment and so then we started building these features uh these coaching features and then we ended up you know as we scaled we hired certified coaches and now they reply but that it, that is another thing that increases the engagement and like our engagement across our entire platform after users have been on it for a year is 50 percent meaning that like every other week leaders are doing actions on our platform even after a year mm -hmm. so you're talking about getting more to this adaptability right it's it's recognizing yeah. where you are and then meeting you which right versus the traditional carpet bombing approach which is just like like here everybody you're all the same here's no, a, here's the content. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Here, here's another thing that we found too, because it's it's really just a year, a year and a half of these small innovations that we just keep looking at what our population is doing and then that make it easier for them. And one of the things, you know, Stitch Fix? Have you have you heard of Stitch Fix? No, yep. I haven't. I okay, haven't, but... so they, they basically, it's an AI that dresses you. So like you tell it what type of clothes you like, and then it just sends you a box. You So you'll say, I oh, want okay. a dress shirt, but you don't get to pick the, like, the color and the dress shirt and everything. You just say, I want a dress shirt. It's going to send you one, but it knows your preferences because you've trained the AI. And so you're going to, you know, you're going to get something magical in this box that you like, right? <laughs> you hope. You hope. <laughs> but what, so we stole a principle from that where we know you as a leader as you start to use the system and we send you challenges that are going to benefit you but you don't get to pick like exactly what they are and the reason why this is important 
is I call it like the Netflix scroll. So what will happen if you make it a library, like Christopher, tell me if this is true, if you've experienced this, if you give someone a library and they can flick through the titles or choose what courses or what they're going to work on, they just, yeah. you, they'll actually do that for like 20 minutes and get exhausted from reading all the things they could do. And then they don't actually do anything. Yeah. I mean, if, and if you're starting to crack that nut, to me, that's, and this is where technology is changing the landscape of stuff. Because if you ask people, what do you need to develop on? And this to me is the beauty of where I think AI is going is it's objective and it probably knows things that maybe we don't know about ourselves or don't really want to admit about ourselves. And so instead of being like, oh, I'm a great leader, but you know, I could polish up on this, that type of personalization is going to say, well, actually, based on things that you've done, I actually think you need to work on this and you know it's going to push people maybe in ways that they that they wouldn't have chosen and again you you don't have the cognitive load of oh now i'm done flipping through netflix and i honestly am too tired from trying to pick a topic to actually have engaged in any of it anyway right i've got some questions guys i want to throw in because uh i realize yeah. We, yeah, so there's a few here but uh andy holmes said uh part of the challenge with this is that in a workshop there's you know psychological safety plays a role uh, yeah. in people being able to demonstrate the appropriate behaviors, you know, throw that forward into the real world. And then the emotions leaders experience throw that previous comfort experience into the wind. Well, so the like psychological safety thing actually dovetails well into that other one. Um, because I know we, we tried to, I won't say where, but at one place we tried to do kind of a video then reflection piece and it tanked. I mean, it tanked faster than the Hindenburg. And largely it went back to this psychological piece where people were there, there wasn't that environment of safety and security where you could feel comfortable failing or you could feel this. And what really, really hit us is when we rolled it out, you know, one of the senior leaders mentioned, oh, I can't wait, you know, to get all these videos so we can kind of handle it like rotten tomatoes. And I remember sitting there going like, oh no, like you just confirmed all the fears of our audience that you know, if they're vulnerable and they just try something and make that mistake that, mm. you know, they're going to get beat up for it. So it is a factor that, you know, if you start toying with these vulnerability things, you have to make sure it's, it's a safe environment or you have a culture where failing fast, failing forward is, it's is acceptable. acceptable. If it's yeah. not. Yeah. And I think out. that's the customer because that's our, like, we're a big fan of your vibe attracts your tribe. And because we're a fail fast, like, let's try things. All you can really do in life is the scientific method, right? Like, let's just do that. We attract customers that are of that mindset too. I'm going to so, share a quick side story. Is that okay? Go for just, it. Yeah. Just to help you, Chris, you said something about uh, watching a YouTube video to ride a bike. Well, back when I was single before the kids and everything, uh, I had a date with a girl, and I live in Florida, which is like a tropical. Where's this going, area. Joel? Where's this going? Well, I watched. <laughs> I watched a video. Hold on a second. We're getting. We don't have. We might have to put the mature logo up here. This girl said, it, "Really cute girl." Said, "Hey, you want to go ice skating? Because there happens to be an ice skating place nearby." And I said, "Oh, of course. I love ice skating. Never been ice skating before in my life." So I watched a YouTube video of it, and then I just went like head first into it, and I didn't fall, but I definitely didn't look cool. <laughs> Yeah. Well, so the YouTube video might have worked for like first date. You can get away with feeling clunky. But if you were in the if you were in the Winter Olympics, I don't know that the YouTube <laughs> would, have, would have carried you. Yeah. Would have carried. Well, and so so here's the other thing too, because I actually had a debate with somebody the other day about this. Because sometimes people get the perception that I'm like anti-content, that content's terrible. I'm like I'm I'm not. I'm not. But experience is where we actually get better at things. We don't get better at things by just watching more of the same stuff. And the other thing is I'm huge on personalization where it's like everybody's different. Our brains are wired differently, the way we operate differently. Some people need more content to build the confidence and the comfort level to, to be willing to experiment. I tend to, I did my Kobe index. I'm off the charts, quick start. Like for me, I'm like, I don't care. I'll just do it and see what happens. That's Not <laughs> everybody's that way. And yeah. that's where I think sometimes leadership development, any sort of learning and development approach, whenever you take this universal, this is what it is, it's like, yeah, you can maybe try and cast the widest net and hope, hope that you're catching most people. But the reality is we all know everybody's different. And so it's not so much wrong. It's just incomplete that it's like, well, that's not the way it works. We always try and say you want to be where they are rather than bring them to you, right? 
and that's why I'm even with our content, I'm trying to make sure it caters to everyone in the way they want to consume it, as opposed to you know the, the way I would like to consume it. I really struggle to consume um, you know value from reading books. I can't retain the information. So for me, I have to watch a video or listen to a podcast. That's it. But that's not the answer, though. I think, Chris, we were speaking about it the other day, right? It's not simple enough just to have a LMS full of content now, even if it oh. is pushing, even if it is pushing content to you that's predictive based on your learning needs. I think that's still ten steps ahead. We need to be from there in the way people consume the content, right. as opposed it's to be, uh, look. I, I love this action based, but I think it's really unique for leadership training. Like, I, I don't think it would be widely applicable to like every. There's some things where you need to learn a lot, but if you want to. One of the things I like about backing this up is my brother is a doctor. And when he was going through med school, he was doing neurosurgery internship and cardiovascular surgery and internship. And I was asking him, I said, how do you learn these really complicated procedures? And they have this very simple concept. So they're actually learning these surgeries in a very short amount of time. They learn a little bit about it. They watch someone do it they do it themselves and they teach someone. So they'll go over the course of like three or four days and they'll actually learn these surgeries. And they're some of the, the most complicated things in the world. You know, in terms of learning from other people, this social aspect is coming up all the time, right? Is, is learning from one another. And I think that's the value of the podcast you guys do. I think that's why people listen to them is because you know, they, they want to hear from other people's experiences. And I think that's where you can take that and then you can apply it and you can personalize it. But you might listen to one podcast and say, that doesn't, that's not necessarily the way I would do it. But foundationally, I can understand that and you can connect people together. So it's a, now, Christopher, you guys have yeah. a, an LMS system at uh, GE, right? Uh huh. And, and after someone watches a video, there's probably some box that they can enter in below, right? Or like they can make some notes or something. Yeah, they can make notes on the video or something. Yeah, it depend. I mean, yes. Let's pretend there is. Let's in, yeah. in, in yes in in yeah. We won't get into this specs. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let, let, let's hypothetical. Now, now, if you want to increase, you get me in trouble. <laughs> I, 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 I just use the word allegedly after Chris. Allegedly. Right? Allegedly. allegedly. Oh, 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 You'll be all right. Allegedly, I could make some notes after this video. Well. Yes. I encourage people, by the way, all the time to steal what we've learned. I say, if, steal it, apply it to your business, do whatever you need to do, because my driving factor is actually how to create better leaders faster throughout the world and how to keep people from hating learning. Like, I don't like it when people cringe at the idea of a leadership workshop, because leadership is a thing and you need to learn it and improve and grow at it. So I don't want people to hate it, right? But if you were to just have a coach or somebody at, you know, one of your people at GE that, that does this, uh, respond to every learning engagement that someone had. So someone watches the video and they make some notes about it or what they learned. And then somebody responded to that individual with some feedback on, you know, what they took from it. That would just, I mean, we saw 20 plus percent engagement just off the coaching alone. Yeah. Because you know, every, t you know, as a human, every time I go put some effort in, into this, and, and have some unique thought about it, that I'm going to get some perspective from, from a coach and I'm gonna get some third party perspective which will allow me to improve. And that's that's like the, the hyper extreme of personalization. This is where that social connection makes a big difference. And anytime you layer that into it, there's a reason you tag people in a comment you know, or something because it's like you're trying to get a response and when you tag somebody, you increase the chances that you're gonna get a response 10 times versus if you just comment because now, you've created a personal connection. So I, I think it's, you know, you're, you're on with that. Yeah. So one question I have for you, Joel, and I'm just interested in terms of the folks you're working with, because going yeah. back to like, why does leadership training fail? But by the time you're engaging training, half the time organizations, like it's too late, like not it's too late, but it's like, you're trying to catch Do up something to else. It. Yeah. Well, and I, th and I think what I've seen is over the years, it's like, well, by the time people are in a leadership role, you're trying to fix it. Maybe they shouldn't have been in a leadership role in the first place. <laughs> yeah, we've done a better job identifying mm. good leaders and, and preparing leaders and setting expectations for what leaders are. Maybe we wouldn't be scratching our heads going, why is leadership training failing? Because it's like, well, because the people really have no business being in leadership roles in the first place. So I'm just curious with some of the folks you're working with, you know, are you seeing them do that kind of bench strength focus with your stuff to kind of say, hey, this is like what leadership is. This is the stuff you can be practicing and try and see, like, is this even for you? Because the reality is 
it's not for everybody. And I think sometimes people think that's bad. And it's like, no, 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 it's no not. exactly. People, people with specialists. It's not for everybody. Like, who cares? It's, yeah, we don't take a customer service person and make them a programmer and like they're not good at it. You know, you're like, <laughs> yeah, you're not like you're a terrible person. You know, yeah, you're, you're a horrible you're, person. You go back to customer up. service. Like, well, no, it's not your thing. <laughs> we do a couple things. So the first thing is we always tell people like when they come to us with, oh, my leaders are horrible. They're emergencies. We they're they're not a sales qualified lead. They need some sort of like in person culture adjustment type deal. Uh, we are definitely, we look at ourselves in two ways. The first way is we're fuel for the fire for great leaders, right? So we're like meal prep for leadership. So people who <laughs> want to improve, it's quick, it's I easy, it's ready good. for them, I love that. Meal right? Prep for leaders. It's right there, <laughs> right? Yeah. The action you can take, the way you can improve, and the category you want, it's just ready for you right there. You're going to go do a 10 minute thing and improve, and it's going to be great, and you're going to get better results from your team, and it's awesome. So we fuel great leaders. That's the first thing. The second thing that I think is interesting that I haven't actually talked about in a while publicly is the original idea was that we would deploy to all leaders, like all available people in the organization, and then those who were interested would start to engage with it. But the initial entry into the market denied that because the budgets are only set up yeah. for existing leaders. So they all say, we don't really care about our people. We're going to push them into a leadership position and then we'll set the budget to fix broken leaders. And so I can't be emotional about the market. I can only adapt to it. And so we, we took our whole business model from saying we're going to deploy to entire divisions of an organization and watch who does this and then help, you know, raise up that next generation of leaders to we'll sell you licenses at, you know, X, X amount of dollars per, per leader, per existing leader. Yeah. I mean, I, and I think if anything, that's probably good advice to write the internal practitioners. And that's the battle and the fight we should be fighting. I and mean, mm -hmm. one of the greatest successes I had in leadership development was we one defined a difference between what makes a great individual contributor for this role and what makes a great leader for this role. And we, yes, we did some stuff for the existing leaders, but where we doubled down was who are all the individual contributors today and who are the ones that are showing promise for leadership and we worked on them and that what we had to shift budgets we had to shift priorities but that actually did exponentially paid off versus oh wow we've got loads and loads of really bad leaders let's keep doing what we're doing but hopefully six months in 12 months in we can kind of you know snap the whip and they'll turn around yeah I, i've got experience when i i was just told one day by the way chris you're a, you're a, you're a sales manager and i was like what <laughs> and I think many people didn't have the choice. They didn't choose to be leaders. That's just Most a natural, don't. yeah, the, yeah, yeah, natural development. And I felt I, I was it was really, really tough when I came from being a very highly sex, uh, successful, specialized salesperson to the week later, I'm managing a team of uh, 35 sales reps. I was like, uh, and I completely not prepared for for, yeah. for that. And also, I didn't want to do it. But it was like, well, this is how the hierarchy works. This is how the hierarchy works in this company. And because you've reached a certain level amount of years in the company and you know sales, now you're just in this role. And I've seen so many people that were promoted in, in those companies fail full flat on their face. And can it's we, not no, no, about, fault of, no fault of their own. Can we talk about why it's a it's a it's a broken system? It's bad, but it's also kind of good and logical. Because I'm sure. thinking for the first, I'm having an original thought as you were saying that, Chris. Well, so to when. I see individual contributors who excel, they get promoted up, right? And so those individuals, they've learned to solve problems, ask good questions, and figure out how to be good at, at overcoming obstacles in their individual contributor role, right? That's why they're standing out. And then they get promoted. And then here's the key part. I see these leaders, two things happen. One, they either, they kind of crash and they feel like, whoa, what am I not getting here? Look at this human dynamics. Look at this whole world. It's leadership. And then they find it fascinating. And then they say, I'm going to go resource myself and get really, really good at it. And then the other people that got promoted, they say, oh, I hate this. I'm just going to ignore and shuck all the responsibilities and just kind of narrow down and put my head down and do as much individual contributor work as I possibly can and just completely ignore the leader thing. Do you see that too? Yeah. And, and that's where I don't think it's necessarily, you have to crack everything first because sometimes people need to be thrown into the furnace like it's it's a good yeah. teaching lesson but if you're going to take that approach 
you have to at least make sure you know people have expectations and understand what that looks like because everybody's definition of what being a leader is is very is very different and at least if you can align on that and say these are the behaviors that are expected of you this is what we held accountable to and this is what it looks like yeah you know let the let the folks that think they want to do that burn out quick and then but then do something and figure out how to push them back and then take the ones that are thriving and and keep that moving but i think that's where sometimes it's kind of haphazard and that's where you end up with and i think sometimes organizations do not realize the impact frontline leaders have on organizational performance i mean massive it, will make or break your company. And so just kind of being like, well, we'll see what happens. It's like, no, that has bottom line impact on organizational success. Yeah, Chris said, uh, Chris Chadwick said, the furnace is the best place to learn. <laughs> you just have to be able to stand the fire. Honestly, that's what I did. Uh, when I first became a manager, and uh, I had no training. There was never any training to be given. I was just told, you now just manage sales. And I just had to sort of sink or swim and just learn on the go. And it was really, really tough. Uh, How the people who reported to you, would the people who reported to you in that first management position say, yeah, you know what? We're really glad Christopher learned through the furnace. You know what, right? I, all I did, this sounds really silly. My strategy was how not to lead was how my boss was leading me before. So I was like, yeah. how, how would I like to be treated? Uh, as, and how would I like to be led myself? And, and then I sat down with a team and, and shared that with them. Of this is what I think, and and how would you like me to lead you, and what, how can I help you? And just just ask them. It was, Care like, about I was like, them. yeah, yeah. I was like, tell me how I can help best support you. And that's because I was like, I I don't know what to do. So let me just ask. So I sat down and had one on ones with them. And I was like, how can I best support you? Yeah. What you hit on there, though, I think so. Self awareness, I completely agree. And going back to Tony's point or question, self if you don't know yourself, you can't know where your gaps or your strengths are. But the thing you did is something that I think people struggle with in leadership is that vulnerability of I don't know anything, I don't know everything. And so I'm going to ask for your help. And I know for me personally, what's made being a people leader work is like, I genuinely care about the people that work for me. Like I have a compassion for making them the best that they can be. And I feel like that's a key leadership attribute of, if yeah. you think it's about you, you probably shouldn't be leading people. If you yeah. think it's about them, then that's, that's the, and that's the dynamic shift you make from going an individual contributor to a people leader is individual contributor. It's about you about you and what you bring to the table and how you can do it. Yeah. People leader is how do I empower and make them amazing? And that is my focus. And, you know, yeah. I think that's, and then that comes with it. Now you have conversations because you're asking the questions you did, which is how do you need to be led to be the best you can be? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I felt that exact same way, by the way, because I'd always been based on my own sales results and it was like, you know, everyone was battling against everyone. So it was just Chris versus the company. And, you know, I want to make sure I get the most sales and be on the top of that leaderboard to all of a sudden, I, I'm now, you know, my, I'm, I'm rewarded based on everyone else's contribution. Yep. Uh, and that was a massive shift for me. I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's no longer about Chris. And I felt almost um, like I, I didn't have much control because I could always control what I did yep. and, and make sure I bring my contributions to the table. But now I had to, you know, had this orchestra of people that I needed to to bring together to to achieve that result, and that was the biggest part for me. That where I and uh, in the comments section, uh, Chris in the comment section said about um, during that time of transition, is you need to have a company that supports you during that yeah. uh, and making that transition. And I definitely didn't have that whatsoever. It was like you're just expected to succeed now. Just because I succeed as a salesperson doesn't mean I'm going to su be successful as a, as a sales leader. Uh, and uh, I, I, yeah, I still think there's many people I speak to now that just assume that they put these people that are very successful uh, in their individual contribution, put them into these leadership roles and wonder why they fail <laughs> straight away. So, um, Well, and I think you, you got back to the point, which is leadership development is a system, right? It's not, you know, there's an aspect of training that's part of that system. There's, yeah. there's a lot of stuff that goes into it, which is why it's such a hard thing to solve for, because there isn't just a silver bullet solution. But by the way, this was unplanned for everyone. So I, I dropped yeah. Chris, Chris a message about an hour before. I was like, you want to go on LinkedIn Live? <laughs> to, and make this happen. So thanks so much, Chris. And obviously, thank Joel. For, for, yeah. uh, it's the first time that, um, that I'm on the podcast with another podcast host. So that's, uh, 
That's fun. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that, that was so yeah, You guys have way cooler setups, right? It, I don't it's know. because, it's because I, I got know. this going on. That's yeah, why I messed right. it up. I, I said to everyone, Chris, you're going to come in next time, but from your drone. I'm going right. to bring you in live, and you're just going to give us a tour and go for a fly around. And uh, yeah. And uh, uh, Jay said he likes Thank the idea. Jay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, shout out to Leaderbits. Jay like, likes the idea of Leaderbits. Is cool yeah. Is it leaderbits.io? Have I got that right? Yes, sir. Yeah, just go and check it out, guys. Um, before we wrap up, guys, parting piece of advice from Joel and Chris. All right, I'll give you some good advice. Build something that your leaders want to do. Make it action-based so that they feel that every time they're going to sit down, they're not just going to sit down into this vacuum and learn for 45 minutes, that they're just going to sit down for a few minutes, only long enough to know like some backstory about why they need to take this action. Make sure those actions are aligned with the culture and who they want to become long-term or what issues they're having short-term. Basically, always ask the question, how do I make better leaders faster within my teams? And then the reporting you'll end up with will make you look like a rock star. You just keep at, if you always put your focus on the customer, which is the leader, and always make it easy for them to improve, then they will just do it. You just have to create that environment for them. Yeah, Chris? So I would say two things. One, and, and one will be focused specifically for L&D practitioners, and one is the bigger one, which is if you're in HR, if you're in anything like that, think of leadership development as a system. There's not, there's not one solution to the problem. You have to look at the whole system. And if you're not, you'll, you'll continue scratching your head indefinitely. Yeah. From the L&D standpoint, and I say this not just for leadership development, but any sort of learning and development, be more focused on the outcomes you want to drive and give people the flexibility to choose their journey to get there. Still provide them with resources and stuff along the way, but we're adults. People are adults. They're smart, intelligent beings, and they, they have different personalities, and they need a different path. And I feel like sometimes L&D gets so caught on the journey instead of saying, let's focus on the destination and let's let people find their own way. Well, look, apart from that, everyone, enjoy your Friday. Uh, thanks again to everyone for joining us and we'll see you all same time next week. Bye.